Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an incredible day. To start things off, it says Bitcoin is currently caught within another bout of sideways trading as its price hovers within the upper 11,000 US dollar region. This trend comes close on the heels of the strong multi-week upswing that allowed it to climb from the lows of 9,000, I think we were even like 7,800, eight, like 8,300 or something like that, to the highs of $12,100 that were set yesterday evening. The lower $12,000 region has been established as a strong resistance zone for the benchmark digital asset. Last Saturday, Bitcoin faced a harsh rejection at this level that led it to the lows of $11,000 yesterday. We faced another rejection at this level, although its price only dipped to as low as 11,700 US dollars. One concurrence within the option market shows that the cryptocurrency's midterm outlook remains incredibly bright, despite its inability to break 12,000 US dollars. You should all know exactly how I feel about the $12,000 level. It's not a real level. It's just simply something that we are below at the moment. I, I don't believe that there's really much resistance anymore. I think that it's simply whales who have control of the market who are trying to accumulate as much cryptocurrency as they possibly can. It's as if Bitcoin can push higher and eventually surmount $14,000. It opens skies. What? It's open skies until it reaches its all-time highs of $20,000 US dollars. We are currently in a sideways motion moving segment where bitcoin's price if you look at the chart over the last week and a half 10 days give or take somewhere around that time frame we keep touching 12,000 and then getting knocked back down and sideways up and down over and over all over again a lot of people are saying that we are going to pass it sometime soon and then of course 14,000 is the number to look for because that is the last high that we had in 2018, 19, yeah, 18 and 19, uh, where we hit 14,000 and it was a huge surge because we had just been at 3,500 US dollars and then the market collapsed once again. So there's also, of course, as one might expect, a large amount of hype everywhere within the cryptocurrency market. Just even the title of this is Hypey. It says four altcoins could break out as Ethereum-based ecosystem goes parabolic, according to Masari researcher. Masari researcher Ryan Watkins is shining the spotlight on four small cap crypto assets. In a series of tweets, Watkins says the coins could be part of a new decentralized finance paradigm that breaks out alongside the second largest blockchain. He said, as Ethereum faces challenges, scaling, and interest in DeFi goes parabolic, there hasn't been a better time for a parallel DeFi ecosystem to break out. So he talks about Luna, and then he talks about the price. Um, what I think is really funny, it says, if Luna were to be valued like its peers by year end, it would imply as much as a $3.50 Luna, a, 10 current, a 10x in the current price. Of course, that's going to happen if... The entire cryptocurrency market goes completely insane. A, a, a 10x price rise is probably going to happen. So you can call anything right during a bull run. He also talks about Kava and Band and Chainlink, which are the constant. Uh, there's no Ave here. Ave is also the other coin that is always spoken about during this um, hype train situation protocol type thing. There's a little chart right here. It says Chainlink, Band Protocol, Nest Protocol, Dia, DOS, Zap, and Telor. Right. Uh, anyway, the point is, um, this, is this, this hype is going to continue for quite some time. This article says Chainlink price forecast linked to the US dollar upward momentum unstoppable. How nigh is 20 US dollars? We're, we're, this isn't going to stop. Uh, until we have that big major bull run. Uh, I know a lot of these coins are very attractive to many people out there. Once again, I do say, if you decide to get into these coins, make sure you know what you are getting into. A lot of these coins are not going to be around after the next cryptocurrency bull run. A lot of these coins are going to be hype coins. However, there is are There's a lot of money to be made with these coins. Just be sure that you are not 
holding the bag when the market um, corrects. And then they, we're, we're not even close to a correction at this point. I mean, when we get to the $30,000 Bitcoin and all these coins have potentially 10 to 15 x uh, just know um, prices don't go up forever. Uh, let's move on. Mm, next up, IOTA has executed the first phase of its Chrysalis project, the beginning of a series of upgrades leading to IOTA 1.5. The upgrade comes with a host of upgrades to improve network performance. MyOTA, which is the token, is also up by more than 12% in the last 24 hours. Oh, that makes sense now. I was wondering, I think yesterday I was like, why is IOTA going up? We didn't even have any IOTA news. I guess it was the people behind the scenes who knew that this news was going to be released. According to the IOTA Foundation, Chrysalis will bring significant performance, usability, and reliability upgrades, including the capacity to handle 1,000 transactions per second, ooh, and the ability to provide 10-second transaction confirmations. That's not too bad. The first phase of the upgrade will include various improvements to achieve those scalability improvements, such as ERTS, that is U-R-T-S, which will improve the speed of the process by transactions, better milestone selection, increased confirmed transactions, a white flag approach to balance calculations, and auto peering, which will reduce the time it takes to set up a node. The second phase will have a Bitcoin unspent transaction output model. Okay, that's not too bad. Which is, uh, I, I don't know. Okay, that could make, okay. Um, usually, usually UTXO is, um, people say that it, it makes transactions a bit more bloated and you also get to see exactly, there's a lot more traceability in the transactions because you can see where the other transactions have been. Okay, atomic transactions, reusable addresses, and binary options. Generally speaking, these changes will improve IOTA's usability rather than scalability. Uh, and it's expected to be completed by the end of October 2020. The crazy part is we're going to blink and before you know it, it's going to be September. So this will be here before you actually know it. Um, yeah. So IOTA is apparently in the process of starting their upgrade. And I guess it makes sense as to why they had the price run up. I'm interested to see really what's going to happen with IOTA over the next year or two. They have a lot of really big partnerships. And the partners have openly come out during press releases saying, yes, we are actually working with IOTA. And I think they even plan on using the IOTA token, if not just even the IOTA uh, blockchain, air quotes, which is called a Tangle. Um, I mean, everyone's upgrading. This is kind of upgrade season. I don't know why they all choose the exact same time. Maybe they all want to get caught up in the, in the hype cyclone. I'm not really sure what it is, but... Um, good luck to them. We'll see how this works out. They aren't really in the news that much anymore, but they, I, I, I feel like, I feel like IOTA could be the coin that like no one really pays attention to for like three or four years. And then in like three and a half years, the coin kind of like spikes up, but no one's been paying attention to it. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see. All right, let's move on. Next up, a recent market report from Arcane Research. An analytics company has informed a surge in Bitcoin, informed, okay, that there's a surge in Bitcoin trading across Brazil and Argentina. The development was likened to the economic status of both countries, which looks severe. So local investors are seizing the opportunity by turning to the cryptocurrency to hedge against the rising inflation. Regardless of 19, Turkey, Brazil, Argentina have recorded new records in weekly Bitcoin trading over the past two months. According to the market report from Arcane Research, Brazil witnessed a 106, wow, 169% increase, 20% in Argentina, and 5% in Turkey in terms of fiat currency trading. The surge in Bitcoin trading volume in these countries is evident that the cryptocurrency is somewhat considered as an instrument by the traders against the diminishing value of their fiat currencies. More so, in Argentina, local currency regulations make it difficult for the traders to seek refuge in foreign currencies like dollars or euros. This is why, I mean, but you, you, not that you can't, but they won't ever have news like this in the actual mainstream news things. And that's not me downing Main Street news, but it's more like a, 
there's a reason why we don't constantly hear news like this. The I was I was watching something. I'm I'm not joking. They they were discussing in in financial news yesterday, um, people collecting art and the value of wine and how real estate prices look like they're going to be going up in this section or this region and how gold is looking. And I'm like, they completely ignore every other terrible thing that's happening on the planet right now. I'm not sure if it's because they want to make sure that investors are constantly fed this optimistic news so that they'll continuously pump their money into these markets. Maybe, maybe that's the answer. Maybe I just answered my own question. But it's very weird because I think if we actually got news about the economic situations in Argentina, Brazil, Turkey, Venezuela, uh, the place where that huge explosion just happened, like all these places. And there was also a um, there was an election yesterday. I'm, I'm, I'm choosing my words lightly because of the algorithm. But you've seen the news. You know that the world is not peachy right now. Um, and along with this, many countries around the world, their citizens are hyper adopting bitcoin this is why whenever we get news that bitcoin's price is looking bearish bitcoin's price isn't going down i'm like that's all complete nonsense that's just news that, that that's stuff that people put out there because they don't really understand or aren't really looking a lot deeper to how much adoption this actually has bitcoin's price as an actual reflection of its actual usage has nothing to do with it every single day there are probably at least ten thousand new people on this planet who are not in the country that you currently are in who are adopting Bitcoin rapidly. And if not Bitcoin, they're adopting a stable coin. They're adopting cryptocurrencies in some sort of way that's helping them to be able to feed their families, to get away from everything that's happened with 19, especially if it comes to joblessness, or also just being able to survive. We also had that news last year, before 19 even started, that people in Venezuela and many other countries were actually mining Bitcoin. I think uh, it was not legal under legal status within the countries that they were in. But they were doing it because they're like, we see the value of Bitcoin go up by 5% every day. The value of our currency, paper currency, goes down by 30% every single day. Well, clearly Bitcoin is a better option because when I go and trade that in for dollars or for whatever I'm trading it in for, I can feed my family properly. It's really insane to kind of think of. So what we currently have, and I think this will eventually be reflected in Bitcoin's price because just logic at some point Um Bitcoin is now a worldwide currency. Bitcoin is being adopted worldwide. Bitcoin is being adopted in countries that you probably have never heard of or probably never going to visit, but they are finding a way to be able to survive and live and even protect what little money that they may have into another asset that has gone up by thousands over the last couple of weeks. Everything around the world asset-wise is probably in some sort of a bubble right now especially real estate, especially stocks, and just about anything else that really doesn't have an actual usage and has been pumped heavily over the last 10 years. Anyway, yeah, so rising uh, crypto volumes in many other countries, this is going to continue happening. It is an honest shame that we don't have more... If we had an accurate, refle re accurate reflection of what's actually happening around the world right now, on normal news, I think we'd be a lot more realistic about what's happening and we'd be able to, dare I say, move on as a people together because we'd be able to find an easier solution. But um, I'm not going to say anymore. Anyway, that's that news. And let's move on. In probably the most popular news that we've had since Bitcoin's having, I'm not joking. Grayscale Investments, a crypto investing and asset management company, has launched a nationwide cryptocurrency ad campaign with TV commercials airing on CNBC, MSNBC, Fox, and Fox Business in the United States. Barry Silbert, Silbert the company's CEO, announced the campaign last week, while Michael Zonenschein, that's an... His name, for those of you who don't know, is actually Sunshine in German. Michael Sunshine, Grayscale's managing director, shared the ad on Twitter earlier today. One of the most prominent cryptocurrency asset management companies in the industry, Grayscale, has kicked off an ambitious ad campaign on national television in the US. First announced last week by the company's CEO, Barry Silbert, the ad campaign represents the company's efforts to legitimize the crypto industry and attack more users to its platform. He said, 
Are you ready? Question mark. At Grayscale's national ad campaign kicks off this week with TV ads on CNBC, MSNBC, Fox, and Fox Business. We're going to bring... Why are there so many R's there? We're going to bring crypto to the masses. Media, if you want a sneak peek, get in touch with Nitwitty. The ad saw its first few minutes of airtime earlier today on the 10th of August. The 30-second 30 30 minute clip. The 30-second clip features a brief history of money. From prehistoric goods trading to modern fiscal policy and showcases cryptocurrency as a solution to money printing. All over the gosh darn place. No matter wh where I went, this was the top news of the day. This one says, why Grayscale's new digital currency ad could bring crypto investing to millions. This one says, Bitcoin, billion dollar, billion dollar investment crypt giant brings Bitcoin to the masses. Apparently, everyone's incredibly excited about Grayscale launching an ad. To be fair, it does probably will have an effect in the long term. Uh, little do we know, or rather we don't maybe realize it as often, ads do have an actual effect on us, even when we try to avoid them in some sort of way. So especially on these major platforms where we were just talking about, they don't have the actual uh, realistic world news. If we can get people from these ads to start even dropping several thousand, if not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions into the cryptocurrency space, of course, we will benefit from it. But this is the, I mean, this was everywhere. I could not get away from this news I mean, I get it. I mean, I mean, it's cool. It's wonderful. Yeah, but geez louise, it was kind of... All right, so Grayscale has launched an ad campaign. We'll see over the next six weeks if it has... Where's that woman's leg going? Wh whose arm is that? What, this, this is a very chaotic... I feel like it's, the, the, the picture's a bit too chaotic for, for, for news about an ad coming. She's, is, that, is that his leg? All right, that's the grayscale news, and that was a really weird photo. I know it wasn't just me, right? Okay, good. And let's move on. Next up, in the news that I found a bit more interesting than the grayscale thing, Facebook has launched Facebook Financial, a new group focused on all payments and commerce-related opportunities with Libra co-founder David Marcus at the helm. Marcus will now head up all payment projects at the tech giant, according to Bloomberg report published on Monday. The project, internally known as F2, rather pretentious, is an effort to reorganize commerce strategy at Facebook. Facebook also added former Upwork executive chief, who cares, Carcelo Marcus, vice president, cool. They said today we're creating a new group to look after all things payments, FS Financial Services at Facebook. One of the many projects that Facebook Financial will oversee includes Facebook Pay, which is Facebook's universal payment feature that the company intends to integrate within all of its apps. That is, I think, does it say somewhere around here, but six years, a president, editions, a Libra. So this has been something that's been spoken about for a while now. And this is part of the reason why regulators had an issue with Facebook launching Libra, because it wouldn't be something that would just be on Facebook. It would be across all of their platforms. And Facebook owns a lot of the major platforms. The idea is that through your app, through your phone, through your computer, you'll be able to pay for everything. The exact same way that you are able to currently tap your phone in the supermarket, or I, I mean, at least that's how it is here. People tap their phones to pay for things, or you have Apple Pay, or you have so-and-so pay, you kind of... Bring up your card on the phone, tap it, bam, you've actually paid. Now imagine when you have billions of users on your platform as Facebook does, and billions across all of their platforms, and you have the option to use all of these things already on your phone, and you can simply, with WhatsApp or Instagram or Facebook, pay for anything that you want. So this is going to be a very fascinating thing as time goes on. I don't think it mentions it inside here. What's Nope. Uh, we had information before from Facebook that at some point, allegedly, they are maybe, no one knows for certain, planning on adding other cryptocurrencies to their uh, wallet. Because the idea was, is that the Libra wallet for their Libra coin was meant to be a multi-asset wallet. 
And they said before that they planned on adding other coins to their wallet. So I assume they'll probably add a couple of other stable coins, probably the other stable coins that they were mandated to create by other countries in order to be able to go along with this project. But at some point, they also mentioned that they were thinking of, or rather this was the, you know how we always have that situation like where, where someone's standing in like a dark alleyway and they give us information and about three months later, it ends up being true. We had the news before that one of those people said that they apparently they're going to add at some point Bitcoin onto their actual Libra digital currency wallet, which I guess is going to be integrated in some sort of way with uh, Facebook pay or whatever the word I said it was called. I can't even find the word anymore. So if that happens, game over. Bitcoin has officially won because it now then becomes, I mean, the same exact thing with PayPal. Once PayPal, I think it's supposed to happen sometime this month. So I forgot about the whole PayPal news. If we get that information that PayPal has an option when you're on PayPal to be able to just buy Bitcoin, or when you sign into Facebook or you're about to pay something or for something with someone, you can also then either buy Bitcoin through Facebook or actually tap on Bitcoin as a payment option and then tap your phone and pay for it the same exact way that, uh, what's their face? Coinbase now has the, and, and Binance have their own crypto cards, which you can also just like swipe or tap and pay in Bitcoin as well. It's, it's kind of insane. So this is why, I, I mean, Grayscale, you know, having an ad campaign for really rich people is wonderful. But when you talk about the, the billions of people using Facebook and their other products being exposed to cryptocurrencies in this sort of way and being exposed to Bitcoin on all of their phones all the time, especially imagine open up, open up, imagine opening up your I'm, I'm holding my hand as if I'm holding a phone. What's wrong with me? Imagine opening up your phone every single day and you keep seeing that as you're paying, you're paying, you're paying, you're paying, you're paying in your currency, you're paying and so and so. But one of the top options always on your phone before you click, I want to pay in euros on Facebook. I want to pay in so and so on Facebook is Bitcoin at the very top. And you start hearing news that Bitcoin has gone from 12,000, 13,000, 18,000. It looks like it could be heading toward 25,000. You're also going to want to start buying as well. But then the ease of allowing billions of people at once to be able to get into this market instantaneously is going to completely change how we view not only payments, but also how it, like how we view even getting into the cryptocurrency space. There will no longer be like that guy was like with the hieroglyphics and my grandmother's aunt's uncle's maiden name backwards and stuff like that. It'll be as simple as using any other payment method and simply clicking pay in Bitcoin or buy Bitcoin or paypal.com transfer my US dollars into Bitcoin. I, I hope sincerely that you all see where this is going because every single payment giant out there has accepted Bitcoin in some sort of way, has mentioned that they're going to have support for Bitcoin or are integrating Bitcoin. This is why the news of Visa and MasterCard alone was so major and, and Bitcoin's price went up by like $6. And it's like, I hope everyone gets it. Just throwing all of that um, out there. And to finish things off, American banking giant, Goldman Sachs crypto development could entail collaboration with social media giants Facebook and JP Morgan. Aha, uh aha, -huh, aha. Uh -huh. Towards the development of the Goldman Sachs coin, also the bank appointed Matthew McDermott as a head of sales. The new head of. Uh, so apparently the coin is underway. CNBC reported the former managing director to have said that Goldman Sachs is exploring the commercial viability of creating its fiat digital token. So apparently they're creating a stable coin. However, McDermott explained that the project is only in its early days. Sure. As they are trying to figure out a potential use case, it's going to be a stable coin. McDermott towards achieving Goldman Sachs's crypto is expanding his team involving Ali Harris, JP Morgan's head of digital asset strategy and in person. And he in person gets in touch with Facebook quite often. Aha. Okay, so they're probably going to have some type of an, uh, a hyper-integrated thing. Ali Harris was part of JP Morgan's crypto development, JPM Coin, and vice president in charge of Quorum, the Ethereum-backed blockchain platform that underpins the JP Morgan coin. Oh yeah, I forgot about that as well. For those of you who don't know, JP Morgan Chase also announced that they were going to be using Ethereum for their uh, coin. Just going to throw that out there. Um, so if Goldman Sachs, Facebook... <laughs> And JP Morgan Chase are all working together on the development of Goldman Sachs's crypto, and I guess even more so on JP Morgan's coin. This probably tells me they're probably working together to also, um, what's the word? 
to offer each other's coins on their platform as a, or as a payment option, which would also then mean if they're going in, and I don't think it's going to be decentralized, air quotes, in the same exact way that we've seen other decentralized coins, is probably going to be something the same exact way that Facebook, for those of you who do not know, with Facebook's uh, coin Libra thing, they plan on having nodes. And I think only 30 nodes will be out there, so it's more decentralized than, you know, what it could have been before. In order to be able to run one of these nodes, you have to have $10 million. Not a fake number. This is a number that they gave everyone last year when they were first talking about this. So I assume, assumption, just going, you know, out on the limb, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs will probably be two of the players in the background who, pot who knows, potentially, who are going to run some of the nodes. The point of running one of the nodes is in to validate the transactions that as the transactions are happening behind the scenes, they're going to have some type of a transaction fee. And one would assume that JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs probably want to also get in on this transaction fee happening behind the scenes if, if they're going to be transacting hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars per year worth of value through all their systems. They're probably all going to be running each other's nodes. That just seems the most, because uh, why, why else would you be working together? Like you want to just sit in the room and talk about how great you all are and how much money you're going to make from your own coins? No, you, you want to have some type of interoperability behind all of this. I think it would be really weird if they pegged the JP Morgan coin and the Goldman Sachs coin to Facebook's Libra. I don't know how they, how they plan on doing it, but it's something behind the scenes where they're all trying to make money through their uh, systems, being interoperable in some sort of way, because what's happening, what I said was going to happen is happening. There are so many different coins that are being made. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. If you have the US dollar and all companies and banks within the US have to use the US dollar, you have one currency. But now you have a whole bunch of different entities within the U.S. who are trying to make their own currencies. And at some point, we're going to have 45 of them. And you can't go into a store and go, do I want to pay an Amazon, Apple, or like Google coin today? Like th th there has to be a very simple solution. So this is probably what they're working towards. Because anyway, it's going to be a... Yeah, yeah. I, I think the next couple of years are going to be really insane because we are no longer questioning if there are going to be corporation coins and banking coins were here. It's just a matter of how well they pull this off because I don't think it's going to work out the way that they think it's going to work out, but we'll see. Because as of right now, everyone has thrown their hat into the ring, but it's about 300 hats and some of them smell. So, I mean, is 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 not the nicest uh, place to be. As always... A very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbuy University, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia 569, Moon Men High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Mullis. Adam Graysick, Moher Maroney, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight, Owl 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Damien Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Wish III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangia, Lavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, His Chess, Everyday, and Kyle Skips, Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Body Make, Boatface, Anytime Fitness, Mars Corner Staff, Arf Medic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho, Nisa, On Crypto with Lana, Crayola, Michelle, URL, and Bolero, Bastos. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a supporter of the channel in their own way. At the moment, the cryptocurrency market looks a mess. This is the drop that we had last evening, or around this time yesterday almost exactly on point, uh, where Bitcoin hit 12,000 US dollars, I think it was 12,100, and then immediately fell back down. I have my own views on that. Say what you will, the market went right back up, and now we are currently in like a sideways downward dog facing yoga position kind of thing. It's very weird. We're currently sitting at 11,753 US dollars. I personally don't feel like there's a lot of resistance for us to go back over 12,000, but I feel like that's going to be a, what's the word? That's, that's just going to be the idea for the next week or so, that we simply can't do it until we do it, and then the, all, the other news that we couldn't do it before simply vanishes. Much of the top 10, except for XRP, is in the red, but even that is also on a downward slope. Tezos is up by 14%, EOS is up by 2%, IOTA is up by almost 14%, I assume, on the news that they are beginning to have their actual upgrades. Um, Digibyte is up by 10% because, you know, logic. Um, Algorand, BitTorrent token, oh my gosh, please, stop it. Um, 
Hadera Hashgraph is also up by almost 19% because, you know, Hadera, Hadera Hashgraph is actually being used by people in Argentina and Venezuela and Bolivia and in Turkey as a way of uh, circumventing um, currency rules and inflation. Oh, wait, it's not Hadera Hashgraph. It's, it's, it's actually Bitcoin. Okay, that makes a bit more sense then. Um, Zillica is also up by 10% as well. Once again, I don't even have to make the same dry joke. Uh... The market has to, and I'm going to keep saying this until it does, has to reflect reality at some point. We know that Bitcoin is adopted by the biggest banks, the biggest institutions, and is probably being accumulated by many countries on the planet right now. But the price just does not reflect it. I do hopeth that you all enjoyed. I hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, great afternoon, a all this grayscale news geez louise wherever you are wherever you might be i do hope that it's absolutely fantastic thank you all once again for watching and or listening and i will most certainly uh, be talking to you all soon see you <laughs>